Hello everyone, today we will start the course science of clothing comfort. Today in the first lecture, I will give the overall outline of this course, which we are going to discuss in next 12 weeks around 35-36 lectures. The course is divided into 8 different modules. I will give brief outline about the each and every modules and what are we going to discuss in all these modules. Before we start the modules, first let us understand, let us ask question, what is clothing comfort? What is comfort basically? First we should understand what is comfort, then we will try to correlate the comfort with the textile material clothing. We should remember that human comfort is not only related to the textile material, textile comfort it relates with many other material like building. In the building we also would like to feel comfortable. So, in that how can you control the comfort in a building? like thermal insulation of the wall, roof, even floor, all these characteristics Im have impact on human comfort. But in our present domain, we will restrict ourselves in the clothing comfort, clothing part. How to impart a required clothing comfort by selecting proper fiber? proper yarn structure, proper fabric structure, all these things we will discuss in detail. And without knowing this all this interrelationship between fiber characteristics, yarn structure, fabric structure, even finishing uh, technique, we cannot achieve comfort, comfort in clothing. And one should remember that a particular clothing may be comfortable to one person, may not be comfortable to other. That means, in that case that is human physiology comes into picture. Even a particular person will not be comfortable with the same fabric at different environment. So, we should also know that which environment. So, we should have knowledge about the environment, we should have knowledge about the human physiological condition, even at various psychological condition, it will be different sensation. So, all these characteristics, even neurophysiology depending on the skin structure sensation, we feel different comfort. You must have observed that if we wear woolen in summer, we feel the pricking sensation. So, all this thing we will discuss step wise. First, let us understand what is comfort. If I ask anyone that what is comfort, tell me in one word, one sentence, it will be very, very difficult, because comfort is not a particular physical, only physical parameter, it is a psychological parameter, it is environmental impact is there. So, everything is related. So, particular definition of comfort is very difficult. Like, if you say that comfort is influenced by physiological reaction of the wearer. I cannot say it is a 100 percent right or it is a 100 percent wrong, it is partially correct, because my physiological 
behavior, physiological reaction is directly related with the comfort. Suppose I am sweating, I may feel warm with a particular fabric, but when I am sitting idle that same fabric I may feel comfortable. So, that is human physio you should understand clear clearly about the human physiological condition, then you can design the like a sportswear. In the sportswear we know that the sports person like a high, high active sportswear like soccer, a player releases huge amount of metabolic heat and also at the same time huge quantity of liquid moisture. So, our fabric if it cannot handle this heat and liquid moisture. So, the particular fabric will be uncomfortable. Like if I ask you do you think that cotton is suitable for sportswear, high active sportswear? Cotton is not suitable for high active sportswear, although cotton is very comfortable for normal application. Why? Because the cotton has got a particular characteristics of high absorption, but cotton is very poor in moisture liquid moisture transmission and release. So, all these aspects we will discuss subsequently. So, after physiological behavior or reaction of wearer, another definition one can give comfort is temperature regulation of body. That means, when we are generating higher metabolic heat that has to be released quickly. Okay. So, that we can keep our body core temperature constant, our body core temperature has to be almost constant. So, 37 plus minus 2 degree it is a maximum we can get. Okay. Typically 37 plus minus 0 0.5 degree Celsius is the ideal. So, body core temperature we have to uh, maintain by release or acceptance of the heat. <coughs> like if you are in the cold temperature, so our body temperature is 37, if you are at the cooler area what will happen that it will release the body will try to release the heat at very high rate. So, our clothing has to control the rate of release that means, it has to regulate the body core temperature. <coughs> so, the this definition of temperature regulation of body is also correct, but it is not complete. Third one is that that comfort is absence of unpleasantness or discomfort. Here the definition is not very clear, it is a total, total uh, mixture of all this characteristic. It talks about the final sensation of our brain, which is uh, from uh, environment, temperature related moisture related and touch related everything. So, that is also correct. <coughs> Next one is that comfort is state of pleasant psychological, physiological and physical harmony between human being and environment that is comfort talks about the psychological component, it is a physiological and physical harmony of that. And we cannot control the environment, we cannot control our body physiology. 
it will definitely change, but to have to be comfortable, we have to be comfortable finally, we have to select our clothing accordingly. Now, I will give you one example. Now, if I ask you, this is an air conditioned room and if I ask you, what is the comfortable temperature? So, comfortable temperature is basically we normally I have asked my students, it is normally says that 25, 26 degree Celsius. Why is this 25 degree Celsius? Why? When our body core temperature is 37 degree Celsius, it should have been around 37 degree Celsius to make us comfortable. Then but if you see the 30 at 37 degree Celsius, we normally feel very uncomfortable, highly uncomfortable. Why? If I tell if I tell it is a temperature is balanced, but it is not actually that. And then why 25, 26 degree Celsius? Basically, at the back of our mind, we think that we are wearing one shirt or t shirt or one trouser that is our actually mindset. And then with that assumption if you have say 25 degree Celsius, so 37 and 25 12 degree 12 degree your it is a uh, difference temperature difference temperature gradient and 27 degree or 25 degree Celsius comfortable temperature means when you are sitting idle. That means, at that temperature at that uh, sitting idle activity whatever metabolic heat you are generating that heat needs to be released you have to release that heat. And to release that heat from your body, you need a temperature gradient. So, that from higher temperature, the heat should uh, get transmitted to the lower temperature. And the rate of release of heat is proportional to the temperature gradient. And metabolic heat, when you are sitting idle, we generate heat at a certain rate. I will discuss in later uh, stages detail. So, you must know your metabolic heat generation. <coughs> so, at that rate when you are sitting idle that heat you have to release and release through your clothing. And your normal one single shot or, or one inner the whatever thermal insulation it provides it is sufficient to provide or to allow the heat to release at that rate whatever rate you are producing. But let us see <coughs> in this room it is a say 25 degree Celsius and we are very comfortable sitting. Suppose, I am now reducing the temperature of the room gradually, what will happen? Gradually, I am reducing say 10 degree Celsius or say I am bringing it down to 0 degree Celsius, what will happen? Basically, at that time you will find that the temperature gradient has increased earlier it was 10 to 12 degree Celsius, now it has become 35, 36 degree Celsius or 37 degree Celsius. So, what will happen? The rate of heat release by the body will increase a lot. So, rate has increased which means your body 
rate at the rate body is generating heat, it is much less than the release of heat. So, you will feel start feeling uncomfortable due to your you will feel uncomfortably cold because of you are releasing more heat than what you are generating. That means, here you just see it is not it is not balanced it is not balanced. So, now at that stage if we want to make yourself comfortable what will you do? We have to reduce the rate of heat release. Now, here comes your clothing part your environment you are not able to control your body we cannot control here and what we are doing <coughs> we have to reduce the rate of it we have to actually make the insulation more. So, that your rate of release of heat is slower. So, we have to bring it down to the rate equal to whatever rate uh, heat we are generating, but if you keep on. So, what uh, uh, how will you do it? We will put on another layer of cloth if it is not sufficient then we will put another jacket and finally, we will find now it is ok. That we are doing from our day to day experience and this thing actually what we are doing we unknowingly what we are trying to bring we are trying to bring our heat balance. Suppose, now you are you keep on at 0 degree Celsius also you keep on adding your cloth one jacket, two jackets, three jackets very thick. How will you feel? You will feel start feeling the uncomfortable feeling due to heat you will feel warm because you have slowed down the heat release of heat. So, that means, the rate you are generating is actually more than the release. So, that means, your psychological and environmental all this human activity also is important. So, all these things you have to keep in balance like at say 0 degree Celsius you are wearing a single cloth again let us come back at 0 degree Celsius we have actually we are feeling uh, uncomfortably cool with a single layer of clothing. Now, so what is a physical harmony? Now, what are you doing? We have started jogging so at 0 degree Celsius with single layer we have started jogging. Now, what we will feel? after certain time will not feel cooler, because we have by jogging by activity physical activity we have started generating more and more heat. And as soon as the heat generation by the body through metabolic heat is equal to the heat release rate of heat release you will start feeling comfortable. You must have observed that uh, with a normal uh, clothing when you we just start you take food immediately you will you feel warm, because you have enough food for energy you are, you are uh, actually metabolic energy you are generating. So, all these things all this interrelationship we will discuss in this course. Okay. <coughs> so, we have discussed that retention or release of body heat it is a prime requirement of clothing. When to retain the body heat, when to release the body heat it depends on the clothing and proper selection of fiber, proper selection of yarn structure, proper selection of fabric structure it is very important you must know all these things.
So, heat not in normal case if you will see most of the environmental temperatures are below the human body temperature most of that except in extreme heat condition. If you see just leave aside that extreme heat or uh, in front of fire most of the uh, this uh, environmental temperature is below body temperature. And if it is above human uh, body temperature the total mechanism will be different. So, that we will discuss in detail okay, at different condition. So, you have to be comfortable in extreme weather extreme cold weather you have to be comfortable with in front of fire also like uh, in front of fire. So, firefighter you have developed a clothing which does not catch fire okay, and which with very highly thermally insulated. So, it will protect the firefighter, but if there is no heat transmission from the body that means, your body core temperature body metabolic heat will keep on generating. So, that there will be special mechanism through which the firefighter will release heat that those things we will discuss in detail. So, the clothing is required to hinder or to assist the flow of heat to and from the environment. So, it from environment sometime we need heat to be arrested or from body sometimes we need to heat to be arrested. So, that thing these things we have to be very careful about selection of the material. <coughs> so, uh, hindrance and assistance is extremely important. Okay. So, this part we have already discussed. Okay. So, normally if we uh, if you reduce the temperature reduce the temperature we need to have more and more layer or higher insulating clothing now we have insulated the clothing what about the windy condition so this is this will bring our clothing uh, is more complex so if we talk about the windy condition that means it will have forced convection we will start suddenly start feeling very very cold. So, for windy condition <coughs> we have to block the pores, so that the heat that wind does not carry take away the body heat along with that, but we have to be very careful that while coating the coating should not block 100 percent. If it blocks if the coating blocks the pores 100 percent what will happen it will not allow our moisture that is uh, uh, perspiration in moisture form from the body to the environment it which is must otherwise we will start feeling highly uncomfortable because our moisture will get accumulated inside the body and we will feel uncomfortable due to that. Okay. Now, we will discuss eight as we have uh, um, discussed that this course have been classified in eight different section. In first section, we will discuss about the what is clothing comfort, how to decide, how to select the clothing, all these aspects we will discuss in this. <coughs> now, need and selection of clothing. We will start with that what is the need. Like clothing, as we know, after food, clothing is the second required. So, there was a need basic need was there, but the selection of clothing depends on the need 
uh, it is not only need, but there are various factors of that. This all this part we will discuss. And then we will discuss the basic elements of clothing comfort. Like selection, if I ask you how do you select clothing, it may be depending on the social status, it may be depending on the occasion, it may be depending on the profession like traffic police. You will have a different set of clothing requirement than a nurse, a doctor. So, the, uh, there are different types of uh, requirement, all these things we will discuss in this segment. Then we will discuss the basic elements of clothing comfort. If you see that uh, there are four basic elements of clothing comfort, I will discuss just now, okay. four basic elements that I will just discuss. So, this detailed we will discuss there, what are the basic elements. So, by knowing all these things, we can decide our clothing. Then we will discuss the clothing comfort and wearer's attitude. So, sometime wearer's attitude dominates over clothing comfort. He may or may not be that much comfortable with that, but he needs that type of clothing, okay? like casual clothing and formal clothing. So, this type of all these details we will discuss. Okay? and how much we can sacrifice our clothing comfort. Okay? And then we will discuss the human clothing interaction, clothing, human and environmental interaction. This part we will discuss and how to understand, how to study the clothing comfort. If you want to understand the, if you want to study, if you want to know the clothing comfort, what are the components you have to study, specific components we will discuss in this part, total introduction part. So, this will give you a broad overview about the need of the clothing, how to actually manipulate the structure, these things we will discuss. Okay. So, four elements as we have discussed earlier. So, these are the four basic elements of clothing comfort, it is a thermophysiological comfort. The first element is thermophysiological comfort, where we will deal with the heat and mass transmission, air transmission obviously it is there. Okay. So, how a clothing transmits heat from the body or transmits heat from environment to the body, which is actually this is the foremost basic elements. Okay. If I ask anyone, are you feeling comfortable? If you are not feeling comfortable, may be the reason you are feeling warm or you are feeling cold. So, that is a it is a very important or sometime you may feel sweaty, you are sweaty, you are actually you are you are not able your clothing is not able to absorb that moisture that you may feel uncomfortable. Like as I have given example of uh, cotton, cotton is very comfortable at this point, at this environment. Why? Because cotton what uh, it absorbs moisture in the liquid form and in the vapor form. So, in the vapor form it also absorbs moisture at slow rate and also due to its hydrophilic in nature it transmits moisture to the other side which is uh, extremely important. So, it transmits moisture vapor in the other uh, layer and gets released, but you may not be comfortable if you wear polyester, 100 percent polyester may not be comfortable even in the air conditioning room. Air conditioned environment you may not be comfortable, because polyester does not absorb moisture. So, if it does not absorb moisture, moisture in vapor form I am talking, I am not talking about the liquid moisture. It absorbs moisture, but at the same time as it is not, it does not absorb moisture. So, it, it cannot release, it cannot transmit moisture in the outer layer. So, polyester you may not be comfortable at that time. 
but it is reverse when you have started sweating profusely. In that case like a sports person, in sports person they use specific type of fiber polyester fiber with specific shape we will discuss um, later. There it, it does not absorb moisture, polyester does not absorb moisture, but it transmits moisture from inner from skin to the outside out surface and from there it gets released. So, that uh, is the mechanism. So, cotton is comfortable for normal temperature, but it is not comfortable for that. So, the all this character transmission behavior we will discuss even air, air when you are uh, when, uh, if to control the air to increase the air permeability it is a very simple you just make the pores larger open structure. So, the air will get transmitted and heat to control the heat you have to make the yarn structure or fabric structure bulkier. Like you must have observed that in uh, woolens, woolen clothing it entrap large quantity of air, steel air, large quantity of steel air. So, it is it gives insulation. So, your yarn or fabric structure has to be such that if it entraps more and more air, steel air then it will be warm. So, if you want to increase the uh, uh, thermal insulation by only by twisting suppose only by twisting. So, if you reduce the twist, so it is a yarn is a loose structure. So, it will entrap loose steel air and it will become thermally insulating, but same fabric if you increase the only uh, do not change anything only change the yarn twist make it hard twisted. So, what will happen it will give you low, low thermal insulation because of the less entrapment of steel air. Okay. Then next basic element is the sensorial or tactile comfort. When we are we wear our skin is the first our body part only body part you can say which is in touch with the clothing and there are different types of sensation which sense. So, in this aspect in this component we will discuss that the sensorial comfort of that. This sensation may be uh, feel or handle whether the feeling is soft harsh feeling it is a whether it is a flexible or it is a full this warm or cool touch static charge generation will we may feel sometime uh, with the static charge generation pricking sensation itching sensation all this sensation which is actually which uh, when fabric interact with the skin or in skin interact with the fabric, this uh, this uh, skin receives all this sensation through our different receptors. There are two types of main receptors one is mechanical receptors and another is thermal receptors. And we must know that our receptors to actually have comfortable with tactile aspect and sensorial comfort. We should have clear knowledge about this, so that you can select the fabric properly. So, a particular fabric may be highly uncomfortable in sensorially uncomfortable, but that fabric after certain changes or certain uh, changes in yarn characteristics, fiber characteristics or fabric characteristics we may make it comfortable. Like one example I will give you, suppose a fabric are made of coarse wool very rough type fabric like a carpet type of wool or say blanket type of wool if it touches you feel uncomfortable it is some sensation it is a itching sensation is there, but very high grade wool uh, like uh, shooting setting you may not feel that mean that much uncomfortable sensation you may feel soft. So, what is the difference here main difference is the diameter of wool diameter of wool that is a 
carpet and a blanket we normally use coarser wool which is bending stiffness is very high. This wool fabrics are short in length, so they have their end point projected from the surface and it penetrates in the uh, with the skin and we get uncomfortable sensation. So, it is uh, very important to understand all these uh, characteristics sensorial characteristics. Okay. Third is that psychological aspects. So, color, luster, crease, peeling. So, all these things give you a psychological. If your cloth does not have a color which is actually it is a normal in sense or your fabric gives a high uh, peeling creased structure. So, that psychology you will feel uncomfortable. You are wearing suppose suddenly you, have, you are wearing a upbeat color you may feel psychologically uncomfortable. Your fabric does not drape properly. So, all these aspects we will also discuss psychological aspects and fitting comfort which is very very important. Like I am wearing I want to wear a tight fit clothing. So, if I want to wear tight fit clothing do we need a oven clothing or knitted. So, you must have clear understanding about the type of structure okay. like a knitted fabric has got stretchability and oven fabric normally it does not stretch. Suppose I am wearing a cloth of tight fit clothing, how will I feel with a made of oven fabric. So, I will not have proper easy body movement it will try to restrict my body movement. So, what will happen? I will feel uncomfortable. So, if I want to have tight fit clothing, so I want to have a fabric with stretchability. You must have seen that stretch jeans. So, when denim we want to wear a tight fit denim, so it has to be stretchable. So, we can make it stretchable. So, this all these aspects we will discuss with and also another thing <coughs> tight fit and loose fit like in a loose fit clothing what we want we want to entrap the entrap the steel air like jacket it is a loose fit. So, we want, want to entrap extra layer of clothing to make ourselves warm. So, all this at fitting uh, comfort we will discuss in this issue. Okay. <coughs> next is that next uh, segment is a psychology and comfort. So, total human psychology we will discuss here like uh, psychological uh, psychophysiological factors of clothing comfort. So, that how the our physiological interaction physiological interaction with the body affect the psychological sensation. So, these things were and then we will have we will discuss the different psychophysics laws of psychophysics and it is a relation with the clothing comfort. So, what is psychophysics? Psychophysics is about the quantification of the strength of internal sensation which can be broadly defined as the quantification of sensory experience like I am feeling cold, but how much cold we have to quantify. So, we have to quantify this sensation then only you can tell you can decide the clothing. So, you must have clear knowledge of psychophysics. So, uh, there are different laws of psychophysics we must understand and we will also discuss about the for clothing comfort specific psychophysics law. And then if we know the our body psychology psychological senses and so on, then only we can design our clothing. So, psychophysics means you have to quantify that how to quantify this it. Then laws of psychophysics that we have discussed, then types of psychophysiological psychophysical scaling. There are scaling like uh, it is 
suppose it is a cold I told you it is a how much it is a too, uh, too cold or too warm. So, what is the scaling? So, that you have to scale then only we can we can actually get that we can get the idea about the comfort. So, types of scaling different there are different types of scaling that we will discuss okay? and psychophysiological scaling of clothing comfort. Then we are trial technique this is a particular actually practical application of psychophysical uh, psychophysics basically. We are trial technique where we deal about that it is not it is not the measurement of the comfort by basically by objective measurement. It is not the thermal comfort, thermal transmission measurement, moisture transmission measurement or um, liquid transmission measurement. It is about the um, a person will wear the cloth and there will be certain guidelines and whatever sensation he it is uh, he is uh, receiving, whatever sensation he is getting he will actually express in terms of some uh, terms. It is a too cold or too hot, it is a moderately comfort like that. So, we will discuss this, uh, this is a, a, a technique a practical technique which is very important. Even objective measurement of clothing sometime fails, a fabric with a, a very high insulation or low insulation sometime fails in the psycho wear trial technique. This part we will discuss in detail. We have uh, actually research data which says the fabric which is highly insulating sometimes fails at the subzero temperature that we will discuss and psychological aspect of aesthetic comfort that we will discuss evo evaluation of course, clothing aesthetic, aesthetic concept of clothing that we will discuss what are the how to evaluate the clothing aesthetics. Okay. That uh, psychophysiological factors what are the factors of psychophysiology? how your you will you will get the cycle of physiological factor. These are the average skin temperature, degree of skin wetness, rate of sweating, these are the factors of clothing comfort, the amount of sweat, amount of sweat absorbed by the body, rate of heartbeat. So, these are all this psychophysiological factor we will discuss. Next will come the neurophysiological process of clothing. What is neurophysiological? It is a basically sensation. The neurophysiological, neurophysiological process is that sensory system of the skin. We will try to understand the detail about the sensory system of the skin. There are nerve endings of in human body as I have told that there are mechanical sensor and uh, thermal sensor, there are different types of sensors. These things we will discuss, mechanical and thermal receptors that we will uh, discuss and they are stimuli at different level they work. Okay. Some sensor work on pressure, we will find some sensor will work on uh, pricking, pain type sensor that we will discuss. Okay. Sensory perception of human body. So, uh, transmission of neurophysiological sensation. So, you have uh, your body has sensed okay, that it has to the sensation has to be transmitted to the brain. So, that uh, it is uh, uh, very important there. Okay. Then physiological requirement of human body, metabolic heat and all these things we will discuss in this part. So, the all these things are interrelated okay. part 3 and part 4 deals with the tactile it is a touch with the body. So, it is a basically it is a, a totally fabric related characteristics whether it is a softness, it is a stiff okay. all these things we will discuss and uh, then it is uh, related with the fabric handle attributes. So, tactile uh, uh, sensation a fabric I am wearing it is a, a harsh feeling, it is a, uh, a soft it is a uh, like this type of sensations are directly it is called fabric handle or tactile sensation. And this we have to you can measure objectively, there are various techniques available. So, it is a uh, uh, there are uh, basically two types of sensation one is subjective type. 
we can tell a fabric a soft or hard or by by touch okay whether it's a in if we go to the market it's a subjective technique we normally use it's a it's a smooth it's a rough it's a flexible it's a soft so all these characteristics we normally test as well and then next come how to measure this subjective characteristics in objectivity. So, there are techniques available and the most important actually widely used technique is the Kawata evaluation system of fabric KESF techniques. Another technique is fast technique. Okay. So, that these things we will discuss in detail though how to measure this tactile characteristics objectively. Another uh, method is the nozzle extraction method. We will discuss the nozzle ex through nozzle extraction you can get um, a simple idea about the uh, fabric tactile characteristics. Okay. And uh, uh, there are, then we will discuss the various fabric parameters which will affect the tactile characteristics. Keep everything suppose keep everything constant you increase the end and peak density warp and wave density what will happen? the fabric will be little bit stiffer, fabric will be a little bit um, um, uh, heavier. So, these things we will discuss in detail. So, what are the fabric, but how to control the fabric handle tactile characteristics simply by changing the parameters. So, this interrelationship we should we must know. Then thermal characteristics, thermal transmission characteristics. So, we must first know the thermal regulation of human body. Then thermal distress at extreme cold and extreme heat condition, what is there in our within our body? We must first know okay, how our body reacts with this extreme temperatures. Okay. Thermal regulation through the clothing system. So, how to control this thermal regulation? These things detail we will discuss. Okay. Thermal comfort of clothing, heat exchange through clothing that we have this we will have to discuss here in this and transient heat. So, warm cool touch. So, if you touch sometime if you touch a particular fabric uh, you will feel warm or some other fabric you will feel cool touch. Why is it so? All these things we will discuss how to measure this warm cool touch. Okay. And then thermal transmission uh, uh, characteristics uh, measurement of thermal transmission. So, we will discuss the various methods of measurement of thermal transmission characteristics. So, that um, how to measure the thermal like sweating guarded hot plate, guarded hot plate and all the, there are various techniques we will discuss. Then we will discuss few extremely important characteristics to know the thermal transmission characteristics of clothing like mat, cloth, tog these are the few uh, important parameters important actually quantity we must understand and their interrelationship to express the clothing comfort clothing thermal um, transmission characteristics uh, thermal and then we will discuss few research study on thermal transmission characteristics of clothing different clothing fabrics okay then sixth is that we will here we will deal with separately the moisture moisture transmission moisture in the form of liquid and moisture in the form of vapor. So, the two different phenomena two different uh, uh, physical phenomena and that we will discuss in detail. Okay. So, if you talk about the uh, moisture transmission in uh, liquid form it is the wicking and wetting. So, and absorption. So, uh, wicking means it is a transmission of moisture and absorption means it will it is actually storing of liquid. Okay. Then we will discuss the evaluation of liquid water transmission. Then next is that moisture in vapor form. We will discuss the uh, total physics is totally different moisture in vapor form. Then condensation of uh, moisture vapor part within the uh, structure within the fabric structure at extreme uh, cold um, condition they, this sometimes creates problem it uh, reduces the thermal insulation. So, this part we have to discuss 
an evaluation of moisture vapor transmission, how to evaluate the moisture vapor transmission this part. Then moisture sensation of clothing that we will discuss one is absolute threshold and, and differential threshold. This part we will di uh, discuss absolute threshold means the minimum value of physical stimulus that will evoke the sensation. Sometime uh, um, suppose touch sometime you may feel it is not you are, you are, although you are uh, some uh, thing is touching you may not feel sensation, but that is a minimum sensation minimum uh, pressure required to have sensation and that depends on different position of the cloth, depends on the number or position of the receptors and similarly for moisture also there are receptors. Okay. So, that we will discuss dynamic heat and moisture transmission characteristics. Here in this segment, segment 7 we will discuss the combined heat and transmission, heat and moisture transmission. Basically, in human comfort, it is not the heat and moisture does not go separate, it is isolation. They are basically it goes together. When you are feeling heat, so your actually body physiology will start sweating. So, you have to actually uh, release the heat, dry heat as well as the sweat. So, it we must understand the, the combined effect of heat and moisture. So, in this segment we will discuss all these issues okay. like clothing, uh, clothing, thermal, um, clothing thermal insulation during sweating, dampness, clamminess okay, all these things we will discuss and buffering effect of clothing which is extremely important buffering effect of clothing by exothermic uh, heat generation and all these things. So, buffering effect we will discuss in detail factors affecting heat and moisture transmission. So, that uh, all these things we will discuss evaluation of heat and moisture trans transmission. So, this um, uh, together how can we uh, evaluate. So, and parameters expressing the heat mass transmission. So, there are uh, different parameters how to express and last one is that the garment fit and comfort. So, this part we have discussed body dimension and pattern we have garment fit and comfort relationship, tight fit and loose fit comfort. Okay, garment fit and pressure that we will discuss and evaluation of tactile comfort. So, how to evaluate the tactile comfort due to the garment fit and factors affecting the garment fit means uh, air gap thickness, garment ventilation okay, and fluctuating microclimate. So, if you are uh, wearing a loose fit garment and you are started walking or move body movement, your that a your microclimate will thickness will fluctuate that is a becomes a complex phenomena. So, that also affects the comfort okay. and garment fit and pressure sensation that we will discuss and measurement of garment fit, how to measure the garment fit, what are the uh, various ways to measure the garment fit. Okay. And these are the reference books one can uh, refer and there is a uh, standard book uh, available science in clothing comfort which is actually which deals with all these aspects so, and there are other um, uh, books one can refer okay and uh, thank you for your attention <laughs>